Hey, welcome to Fireside Tats, the official podcast of the Tattoo Improvement Network. I'm Jake. I'm always here. We're uh, this has got to be our 700th interview of uh, Ink and Iron Nashville, uh, but uh, we've got a, a good one uh, here because we've got a, a kind of a hybrid: uh, a painter, tattooer, which is always fun to get. Nathan underneath. Um, tell us uh, just a little bit about your background. You were you a painter or a tattooer first? Painter, painter, painter first. long before. Um, I painted and did a lot of fine art. Um, you know band flyers and stuff uh illustrated my first book when i was like 12 um oh. and what was that always uh, it was a uh, for a school like on uh economics and i illustrated like mimes and how they manage their money uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. crazy yeah that was my that was my first paid uh paid gig so yeah. Um, that's Man, what you're I getting say. paid I, for art at 12. That's yeah, pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I, when I, I say I started. Huh. But um, yeah, I always thought I would be in fine art um, forever and um, wanted to be like a Disney animator. And yeah. um, once Pixar came out with uh, graphic art, then I switched and started. Yeah. Um, they kind of changed the game a yeah, little bit. Yeah, started trying to get more into that. Man, I just couldn't. I, I went to school for uh, visual communications, graphic design, and just hated it. Really? I wanted, I wanted my charcoal and my paint to be messy. Yeah. Um, so I, I did that on the side just as a, as a hobby. And it wasn't until years later um, I kind of fell into into an apprenticeship and tattooing. And, um, yeah. Where did you it. go to school? <clears throat> Where did I go to school? Mm-hmm. Uh, I started at Purdue, and then I uh, ended up switching to uh, Indiana Tech in Fort Wayne um, and studied engineering. Of oh, offerings. really? <laughs> huh. So what do you – outside of the graphic design did you study fine art at all in college mm-hmm. oh, okay no. you just did it no nope, just, just a hobby uh. I, I found that when when i was being told what i had to do um given assignments and being told to mimic something else i just it made me lose the passion for it and uh, i got really frustrated i didn't feel like i was doing my best work so I'd have an art project and I would, you know, be sitting there on the floor of my dorm room doing something super creative and artistic, just not the artistic creative stuff I was supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so common with people. I mean, I even find myself with in, in tattooing, like sitting down, I've got three big tattoos I have to get out and then I end up drawing something completely right. unrelated all the time. Yeah. I don't know why that is. It just always works. That and way. then see what you can sell the client. You know? <laughs> right. I know this is what I was supposed yeah. to do. Yeah, but. exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, this isn't exactly the direction you were wanting to go, but this is what I did. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so how have you, uh, what, as far as painting goes, what's your medium of choice? Uh, here lately, it's been watercolor. Um, I started, um, I've, I've always done acrylics. Um, I've maybe done th- three oil paintings my entire life um, just not drawn to it or just yeah i'm i'm super add and i like immediate instant gratification um and just the drying and the manipulating and you know it's it's great for some people and to me it's you know i'm the guy that's like blow drying while painting because <laughs> right. I, it's, it's just want to get through it <laughs> yeah yeah so. i think that I'm, I'm primarily an oil painter and i find that that i um you can get because you can manipulate it for so long that you can uh, you can work on a piece indefinitely, and yeah. you'll never never I, get to a, a that's point. The, of that's my problem, at least with it, is that I'm I'm never it will never be called done, right? And so commissions will be delivered wet, yeah. <laughs> Galleries will be hung <laughs> wet, yeah. um, you know, nothing will ever be done. Yeah, so yeah. I was really um, I think that way even in tattooing, and I um, I was it made me feel so good to hear Guy Atchison one time in an interview say like I can always make your tattoo better like if you let me work on it 40 times I'll just make it better each right. time like and I'm glad to hear someone say that and put it that way because that's right. the way I always feel people are like how many more sittings do we have on this I'm like ah, yeah I don't know as many like, as you, as many as you yeah. can do I don't know I keep working on it so how has your painting translated to tattooing were you able to find an immediate translation or? yeah yeah um I, I typically tattoo with uh, primarily really big mag uh, stuff, and um, I do a lot of sculpting and layer building. But as far as um, you know, stylistically, I I feel like my tattoos and my paintings look very similar. You yeah. can um, you can look at a tattoo that I've done and be like, yeah, that's that's Nathan. Oh, and there's one of his paintings too because they have. Um, 
a lot of similarities in yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of uh, unique. I know a lot of people that both tattoo and paint, they'll try to make their paintings as anti-tattoo as they can mm -hmm. you know they may be now of course they may have much have a much more traditional approach to tattooing and a very you know looser approach to painting or something like that yeah. but uh, but I did notice that um, uh, looking through your Instagram page that there there's a really direct translation a lot of it a lot of those abstract kind of shapes mm -hmm. come into your tattooing yeah um, as far a lot of people are working that are trying to work in like a, a painterly kind of watercolory style sure. and it really takes a pretty solid technical know-how to pull that off effectively yeah. did was that hard for you to transition into or um i mean i'm i'm still you know i'm still learning and still tweaking things uh here and there but one of the things i found with um you know the watercolor tattoo is that um people are still approaching it with this like fill-in type mm -hmm. thing and then they they want to look at a watercolor and uh, you know mesh uh, you know a specific tone and then they don't find it in their palette and um, for me I like taking um, and working like a base with it because I feel like the longevity of watercolor tattoos really isn't there and a lot of people um, you know say there's no black it's never gonna hold yeah. it's never gonna last but you can still do you can still build up some bases with um, I do a lot of uh, peaches and nude tones um, before just to like sculpt out how, how you know if you were pouring liquid on that part of the body how would it move huh. and flow so it sculpts it kind of opens the skin up a little bit and from there then you can bring in um, your blues and pinks and then bring in a purple to you know to, um, you know mix the the warm and the cool tones together huh. that's um, an interesting approach I've never heard of that so you're actually you mean you're you're mixing some kind of or using some kind of fleshy tones on the front yeah. end mm -hmm. huh. yeah and then uh, and the nice thing about breaking the skin like that and using fleshy tones is that whenever you whenever you pull the, the brighter colors in that you're able to get a nice blend a, pretty easily. A super smooth transition um, without having to you know match your tones and completely rinse out and um, I feel like it's it's a lot more organic as far as how um, you know like it's more true to the the painting style of watercolor where right. you're letting the water uh, make those tones by pushing pushing pigment and y you are left with that with that depth of darker colors that you can always come in and sculpt in later in the tattoo yeah instead yeah. of using black and right you still have that longevity and something really saturated really solid but also very soft and organic have you been doing this long enough to see how it's holding up over two three four years or um i think i, I started doing it just a maybe a couple years ago okay. um are you seeing he'll work from that earlier time yeah yeah and there's like going back to what we were saying every time i see a healed piece it's uh, yeah. <laughs> can i work on that <laughs> right right <laughs> you know i'm not doing that anymore i promise yeah um but but yeah i mean it, it's still holding up uh really well and has has the the bold contrast that i started off with especially my my typical pieces um usually have a very realistic element but it's uh, more vectored and like graphic um, and so you get those really deep blacks the really bright highlights not a whole lot of mid-tones so then when I add in the abstract paint paint strokes and stuff it um, really helps you know too. still yeah. solidifies and yeah. last a long time yeah I, I think that's uh, that it's interesting that we're seeing people take um, take these really unique approaches like what you're doing like putting in a lot of flesh tones on the front end and, and kind of working light to dark in some ways and, and stuff like that when we've come from a, a time in tattooing whenever I first started that it was so the rules were so hard and fast like you, mm -hmm. you would never a, a, approach a tattoo the way that you're doing it right now and um, so the interesting thing about that is that we're getting to see like first off what people can do and then over time we'll get to see if it actually works right, right. <laughs> so. well and that's that's the thing a lot of times you have that uh, no you don't do it like that you're not allowed to do it like that and <clears throat> you know maybe maybe it'll work maybe it won't you yeah. know no idea right um you know i i like to think that i have a really good rapport with my clientele and i like talking through my process i like telling them what i'm doing and why i'm doing it um I always check back and follow up you know send text messages two three weeks after a tattoo just to uh, touch base 
you know, go through all my release forms and be like, oh, I haven't talked to them in a, in a while. Uh-huh. Let me see. Um, just keeping that, um, keeping them uh, knowing that you have a vested interest and that you actually care. It wasn't just a, you know, come give me your money and let me try new stuff on you. Yeah, you know? that's a, <clears throat> that's really unique too. I don't think a lot of people do that. I mean, repeat business is one thing. You're seeing people that you ta- tattoo over and over, right. but to follow up with someone that maybe, you know, you may not see again is, yeah. uh, I'm sure that means a lot to them and probably makes them feel a lot more comfortable if they did want you to look at something Absolutely. again. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we. Um, I, I'm really interested to see how how uh, tattooing continues to evolve with with guys like you d- doing what you are. We have Nico Hurtado here this weekend, and you look at his portrait work and all these subtle, subtle flesh tones yeah. that it's that you're just like, insane. what are they? Yeah, like what are they gonna be? You know, I mean, they right. look, obviously it looks fantastic, but what's it gonna be in five years? I don't yeah. know. You know, uh, some of these guys. We were talking to someone earlier about some of these like. What's his name? Phil Garcia or something's doing these like l- really light, almost like white roses and stuff with pink, yeah. subtle pinks, and they're <clears throat> they're in these like tan areas on people, and you're like, what's that gonna be? I yeah. don't know. Yeah, and it, Phil Phil's roses are insane. They're so good. Yeah, but um, yeah, well, I actually one of the, when I was talking about like the uh, using new tones and peaches and pinks instead of just like straight, you know, reds and yeah. lighter reds. Um, one of the things, or one of the reasons I started doing that was because of uh, a comment that Nico had made in one of his uh, videos on, um, you know, instead of just lightening with white, lighten with, within that same, that same palette. So I've been using a lot of uh, uh, hot pinks and tangerines and, and peaches to, like, start muting down my brighter reds, oh. and it gives that, um, that uh, more subtle transition. Um, so then when you, you know, when you don't have to use as much white for one, you know, with accenting, but when you do use it, it's super, super, uh, stark. Yeah. Yeah. I I hadn't heard him say that, but that makes perfect sense. So you're, so you're just lighting with, uh, you're, you're lightening things with, um, with colors in the same family, basically. You're just like, uh, yeah. Reds with peaches or what. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's, that's interesting. It's something I've never really. Well, it's funny when I'm like when I'm doing like, you know, a a puddle of blood or something with a, you know, a skull and the guy sees me pull out this really light girly (laughs) pink and he's like, what are you doing with that? (laughs) It's fine. It's fine. And it it makes it so much brighter. And then when you put those wet glares in uh, with white, it, you know, really pops because it's not so much white and overly accented. Yeah. Are you using a pretty wide palette or do you kind of keep a pretty narrow palette? Um, I have a like a gray wash set, um, and I use four different reds, and then um, pink, peach, uh, yeah, tangerine, hot pink. Just so I mean, hmm. so not not, not much not at all. Huh. Do you uh, <clears throat> do you try to as far as your painting palette as opposed to your tattoo palette? Are they? I, I guess the they're same pretty. Thing. They're pretty similar. Yeah. yeah. Um, even when I'm not working monochromatically, I'll still. Um, I'll still do layers and it like that, you know, I'll mix a lot of warm tones and I I jump around a lot in a painting to try to make sure that it's, it's well balanced. If I don't, you know, I mix up a palette. um, I want that palette to be seen all throughout instead of, you know, working on it down here. And then I want those same colors and I can never get back to them. So, um, but a similar approach, you know, paint the entire thing with one with one uh, you know family of colors you know rinse my palette and do mix a new one paint the whole thing all over huh yeah that's that's interesting i've um are they about to start a new thing <laughs> <laughs> all right maybe we should start to wrap it up then we have they're doing tattoo uh competitions right next to us so if you guys are hearing something crazy that's what it is um well, if someone uh, if, if someone wants to find you for, are you booking months out in advance? Or are you trying um, to stay? Yeah, I I normally do uh, like a month, month and a half, something. So okay. it's not not too crazy. Um, I feel a little overwhelmed if I go beyond that too much. Yeah, I I like taking. Uh, you know, being excited about, you know, a few appointments as opposed to, oh, shit, I forgot yeah. this appointment. Now I got to stay up all night drawing something that I'm not, you yeah. know, that I feel rushed about. Right. So, again, getting back to that, 
staying personal with clients and if somebody says hey I just got a bonus check when can I get in for my next session yeah. and you're like see you in six months right you that know, bonus check is gone it, it, yeah. it leaves them with that feeling that you know I, I thought I was special and right. you know right. why aren't you being more accommodating so. yeah yeah. what's the best way for people to contact you for appointments um, if you just google uh, Nathan underneath my uh, my dot com pops up there's a contact okay. link in there uh, okay. Facebook Instagram, Instagram. Instagram. All, you know, stuff. all the all the normal ones. Cool, man. Well, great information. I, I love that people are. It, that's another thing that's changing about the industry is people are so much more willing to share what they're doing. And people and are what, accepting of the change and the risks. And yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it really is nice. It's such a different world than we used to live in in the tattoo industry. Yeah, it really is for so, sure. Cool, man. Thanks a lot. All right. All Thanks. Right. Appreciate it. Right. Yeah. Thanks, guys.